Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today. I learned Svelte and SvelteKit series. Today, we're going to be looking at adding TypeScript to a SvelteKit application. And this is under the assumption that you already didn't start with uh, TypeScript because obviously you can just select it. So you have an application and you want to convert it to TypeScript. How can you do that? We're going to walk through it with our application here. And we're going to go ahead and just jump right in. So here's the demo, of course. The application has just a few pages here. You can sign in, sign out still. This is with TypeScript already done and on here. And the application still just works as expected. Um, now we can go ahead and dive into the code. Got a lot of changes here. So we'll, we'll dive in pretty quick. This is not indicative of you know every application. You could probably do some of this stuff uh, on a slower basis. I went ahead and did quite a few a bit up front. And so we can go ahead and get started. By the way, I'm David W. Parker. You could support me on Patreon if you kind of like this type of content. And you can also support me and buy me a coffee if you'd like. Like and subscribe below. So the first thing is, just like the other episode, whenever you want to do something new like this, if there's a good demo application out there, go ahead and use that. So for my application here, I went ahead and I created a new app that had TypeScript. So certain files like this tsconfig, I just copied straight from the, um, the demo application. Um, certain things like this felt config here, this type import line, those types of things you can easily get from the other application. So that is a great starting spot, and I highly recommend that if you're not used to doing things like that. So first things first, let me go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger, is we did. I copied over this tsconfig file, so there's nothing new in there. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the configuration that they've defined, but what I would recommend doing is, like I said, make the demo app and just copy it. These felt config. I just added this line here with the config option. In my package JSON, I did a few things here. I added the ESLint plugin and parser, and I also added the TSLib and TypeScript packages. So those packages, I also removed a few unneeded packages that I had from uh, previous episodes. So you don't need to worry about that unless you just have those unnecessarily as well. After you've done an npm install of those packages, uh, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, the last thing I did is I copied over this ESLint, and that was also in this other uh, my app as well. So a couple of files that were copied. And if I go back to that, so here's the ESLint file as well. So copied a couple of files. The service worker I had commented out at a long previous episode, I, I re-enabled it and converted it to TypeScript. So I did commit the cardinal sin of TypeScript in that I'm using any in a few places. So you know, don't use that if you can avoid it, of course. Um, so three examples of using any here. In our hooks, let me go ahead and just open the file. I'm importing the type of handle in git session from this felt kit, uh, kit. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the git session uh, has the return of git session here. And the handle is the handle. I also renamed this file to uh, ts. Uh, the sitemap, go ahead and look at that. Same thing, the request handler here. So we have a get, we're going to make sure we have the request handler pulled in from kit. In our index, and a lot of my svelte.svelte .svelte files, I had previously had a .js in there because it was uh, not finding those. Uh, it's been a while, and those have been working without it for a while, but I hadn't ever removed those. So all of the files where I have a .js in the import, I have converted. So this is an, another couple of examples. And we'll just walk through all of those because it shouldn't take very long. So sign up, 
has been changed to remove.js sign in uh, as well. Um, skipping those endpoints. So these are more .js imports. Another one. So basically almost all of the .svel files. In fact, I think that's the only thing I've changed so far in those. And nav, yep, this card, this form and card, and the comment card. So all of the .svelte files, have, that's the only thing I've changed so far. The icons, I just renamed, we'll start from the top here. Icons, I just renamed uh, to .ts. In APIs, we'll come back to that one in just a moment. Stores, I renamed .ts, and I gave a string and an any value to their create writable store. Now again, try not to use any if you can avoid it. I went ahead and threw it here for now, and I will uh, be correcting those over time. Um, let's go ahead and start looking at our endpoints here. So we'll just look at the sign in first. So request and response types, uh, importing each of those, making sure to set the request to the request. And we're going to be returning a promise with that response um, on there. And I think that's the only thing I had to change here. I Let's double check that. Oh, I also converted the body to be the browser uh, this way instead of doing the full request.body version. Um, sign out. Same thing, importing type of response and request from SvelteKit, setting the request to the request type, and the return to this promise. Um, uh, some of these files I have I had let on here uh, unnecessarily, so TypeScript yelled at me, uh, which is great. And I converted those. This index here, the same request response thing, and the const here instead of the let. And finally, this ID, I think is the same as well. Yep, in fact, it is all around. So I had the delete down at the bottom as well and the const. So all of those are very repetitive. The main gist of it being that we import the type and we make sure we set the, the types on each of these. And these files are good to go. So endpoints are very simple to do. So that is all of those. Let's, uh, I already looked at sitemap. It's really nothing. The main difference is between the old one um, is we have the, oops, I clicked circuit for sugar. Is we have to get the request handler in here and have that set. Uh, I had an extra Tailwind file that I didn't need, so I got rid of that. And I have this APIs that got renamed to TypeScript. This was probably the one with the biggest number of changes. And this was, you know, originally from this real world example, which I don't even know if it exists anymore. I can see if it does. It doesn't even exist anymore. So, but it wasn't in TypeScript. So I gave each of these a type where I know it, string and path and base. The session and data, which is optional, I, I gave it an any. So a few of those, and then it's gonna return a promise with any. Again, I'm not a huge fan of, you know, you shouldn't be using any in TypeScript. This is just to show you how you can quickly convert all of the things that you need to be able to convert. And I think that was it. And same all the way down each of the get, the L post, and but all of these methods take the exact same. And certain things like the session is optional here. And then this git form body from Dana Woodman's, again, just doing any's. And those could be an actual form body, et cetera. So we could like to take the time to convert those at some point. Now, finally, uh, one thing I didn't do, but what you can start doing, and let me see if I even did it here. Nope. So we'll go to, we'll close out of this, and we'll look at 
Now that we have TypeScript enabled, we can go ahead and start using it in our actual Svelte files for this pieces of JavaScript here. So now you can, you know, type in um, lang equals ts, and that'll start setting these as TypeScript. Um, so you could do things like this if you want. It doesn't really necessarily make, make sense to do it on something that you already know is defined, but you can define, you know, whatever. So that is how you can start implementing TypeScript in the, in the Svelte files themselves. And it's giving me some red here. So yeah, so type of unknown now. And if I was to remove this from the file, that should go away, I believe. Might have to reload the TypeScript server. Oh, no, and that's gone. Yeah. So if you start defining things with TypeScript, you are going to get stuff like that all over the place. Um, and that's fine. You're just going to need to learn how to correct it. So again, um, we will go ahead and slowly be adding TypeScript throughout all of the .self files, through all the former .js files. And that's really it. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe, if you will. Take a look. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.